Welcome back to a new tips video. I'm just going to take a couple minutes before we get started to talk about some news. Uh, it's been an extremely busy summer, so that's why I haven't been able to put out videos a little bit sooner than I have. Uh, make videos are definitely on the way, and I have some really killer videos on the computer just waiting for those few final scenes to finish up and publish. So I haven't gone anywhere. I've just been working a little bit slower because of my workload. So thank you for sticking with me. Um, news about the resin cast figure. Uh, resin cast figure is just about ready to launch. We are going to put a campaign on toybacker.com. That's coming any minute. I have my pitch video ready to go. I'm going to put it on my channel first in a couple days and then it's going to end up on the toybacker website and you could follow along and see how that goes. So thank you for your support. I want to thank Mez headphones for sending me a pair of wooden headphones that the cats got a hold of and uh, I was able to fix with gaffer tape, which is our subject today. We're going to talk about gaffer's tape and regular tape and a couple of tips and tricks. Mossy Oak camo hats are now available on the JimmyDiresta.com store. A lot of people wrote to me and said, I want a camo hat, not a black hat. So those are available along with stencils and pencils and t-shirts and some new stuff. Working on trying to get some knives made. I'm, uh, the first product I'm working on is trying to get one of these made in my own style. And we're also going to offer ice picks shortly. Dave and I are going to do a first handmade run of about 200 ice picks. That's coming up shortly. And uh, so just want to say thank you for hanging with me and sticking it out. Now to our regularly scheduled tips video. If you're like me and you want your toe straps and your ratchet straps ready to go in the truck, you can do what I do. And I use stretch wrap. Just one or two loops of stretch wrap keeps them organized. Now I could have a bag in my truck with six or seven of these ready to go and simply just pull on the stretch wrap to undo them. One of my pet peeves is when you open up someone's truck and they have like 50 of these and they're all completely tangled together like spaghetti. Makes them virtually useless. So that stretch wrap works good because it doesn't leave any of the adhesive on top of the straps and they just unwrap simply when you need them. And in some cases, if you're good with this, you could restretch it back. And there you go. One thing I like to do on job sites is if we have installations and we're going to spend all day on a site, or if I'm doing gaffing or whatever. If I'm gonna be carrying around tools all day long, I always like to put a little bit of tape on that tool so I have tape at my ready if I need it. So for example, here on the end of this hammer, I have some black electrical tape if I need it, and it's there all day long, and it doesn't interfere with me hammering, I promise you, it doesn't at all. Here's the knife, I just recently did this big installation all week long in New Orleans. We did a big party setup, and I carried this knife with me to cut materials, to cut debris, to cut boxes up, and this gaffer's tape wrapped around the handle came in handy all week long. You just never know when you're going to need it to tape string of lights up or whatever you need it for. It's there and it's ready. Tripod. Oh, and on your tripod. Put it on your tripod if you need to tape your camera in a position or one thing or another or if you're going to be on a photo shoot. It's good to have it on your tripod as well. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my God, it's so hot. If you're like me and you buy the cheapest possible packing tape from the dollar store, it's really important to never lose the end. Keep the tape like that. If you lose the end, you get fired. And if you do lose the end, and we don't know where the end is, for me, since my fingertips are like dog pads, I can't really feel very much in a very delicate sense. The best way for me to find the end of a cheap roll of tape like this is to use the tip of my tongue. I know it sounds crazy, but I've been doing it for a hundred years. A hundred years? Thirty. Twenty-five. There it is. I typically can't feel that with my fingers. Or see it with my eyes because I need glasses. But there you go. Always keep it like that. That's what I do. Sometimes when I'm edge banding wood, I'll tape those strips into place. I don't nail them because I want to be able to hand plane them or sand them later. And I'll need multiple pieces of short tape. 
and I always use my serrated knife because it cuts the best and I set up a whole row of tape pieces and I'll show you how I do it. Look at his legs. <clears throat> this is adhesive transfer tape. A lot of people see this and they don't realize what it is. They call it snot tape because on the back of it you basically have this sort of rubber cement that peels off. And people don't often understand exactly what it's used for. But in the packaging graphic design industry, it's used a lot for making composites and that's like uh, before you actually manufacture the package you need to make a composite or a dummy package to show the client what it's going to look like. And this is really the best stuff to use because unlike spray glue this will never let go. Once you burnish it down, it's down for good. And another good use for this is just for making stickers. Say for instance I have David's card right here. I want to make his logo into a sticker. I'll show you how to do that. You just coat the back of the object. And you got to be kind of delicate with it because you don't want to pull the tape off of the you don't want to pull the adhesive off of the transfer tape. Burnish it. So there, now I have essentially a sticker. I can now put this graphic and stick it anywhere. So there, I've made David's card into a sticker. This is the bandsaw of YouTube Love. All the stickers I get, I'm going to stick on here. You can see I still have a lot of empty space. I'm going to have to use around the back everything. So thank you for sending me stickers. I actually do stick them on something. What I have here is two rolls of 3M tape and a piece of glass. This 3M tape, of course, is expensive. I get it for free. They send it to me. So thank you, 3M. I'm going to show you a little trick if you uh, need thin strips of tape or if you want to be conservative with the tape that you do have. I split the tape in half or even thinner than half and I'll show you how I do it. I have a piece of glass here that I found in the street about 20 minutes ago. I just cleaned it off and then I lay the tape hanging over the edge of the glass. You'll probably see a little bit of light break there and I take a razor blade, typically a sharp new razor blade and I use the edge of that glass as my cutting surface and I end up with a nice fine strip and then again I move the tape over a little bit and it's good to use glass because glass doesn't compromise the adhesive on the back of the tape as you pull it and push it back down especially a clean piece of glass so there I have three trusty factory edges off of one piece of tape and now I'll show you how you could apply that. And this thin tape is the tape I just made on the edge of the glass. By making my tape really skinny, I was able to mask around the edges of these curves and then I add my blocking tape. We want to paint the inside of the shape black. This is white. Sometimes tape bleeds. So we're going to seal the edge of the tape with the color of the background. Once that dries, then I'll paint the darker color inside the graphic. So I'm literally sealing. Even on these curves, I tried to make them as smooth as possible, but when the tape bends, sometimes it ripples up smaller than you could actually see with your eye.
And that's how you get a nice sharp line by painting the background color to seal your tape line and then the dominant graphic color. Sometimes you need to know how deep you're drilling over and over again and a simple solution is to put a tape flag on it. Just to be ensured that the tape flag is not wearing out I always also put a little bit of a sharpie line there. So there's my flag and then I have a sharpie line. So if the tape begins to move or wear out I could see my sharpie line. But the tape is easier to see while I'm working. And when you leave the flag sticking out, it sweeps away the dust when it gets right to where it needs to be. Sorry, Spike. <laughs> He's all covered with sawdust. This is just a little pet peeve of mine and a pay it forward suggestion. If you're going to mail anybody a package in this world, you're going to use bubble wrap, you're going to either use tape, but I recommend you use stretch wrap because it works just as well. And then if you indicate where the end of it is, they can unwrap it without using a razor blade. They could reuse the bubble wrap and they won't damage the product inside. That's why you put the bubble wrap on so it doesn't get damaged. But when people open it with a razor blade or a pair of scissors, because it's got a half a roll of clear packing tape on it, you defeat the purpose. So here I gave a little indication where to pull that. You pull that, the whole package unwraps. It's just as safe. And we can get at the product inside without using a knife. And then we could use the bubble wrap again. Isn't that special? I'm going to show you a lot of times when you're filling seams, if you create something out of wood and you want to fill the seams with wood filler, it's really important to mask both sides of that joint that you're about to fill because the wood filler in some cases, depending upon the brand you use, will inhibit stain. If the next step is going to be stain or varnish, the wood filler will show just like glue. Mask off both sides of where you want to put your wood fill and you'll get a much neater job. Once you get the wood filler in place, pull your tape off. And there, now you have only that thin line to sand. This is mimics the corner of a tub, for instance. Same thing goes for silicone. Whenever I apply silicone, on a tile job or anything, I always mask off both edges because it's just going to get messy no matter what. Mask off a couple of millimeters away from each side. It's really the only way to get a perfectly clean joint. So there, I've given myself enough room to swipe with my finger. So let me go in with the silicone. I'm using black silicone, which of course is always the messiest. There. Now I go with my finger and give it a wipe. Wipe it off, give it another wipe. And by wiping it, you're forcing it into the open joint you're trying to seal to begin with. So that's actually a good thing. Now I'll let this dry for about 10 minutes before I pull the tape off. All right, we waited a few minutes. Let's give it a shot, see how it looks. When you peel it, peel it up and away kind of quickly because if you slow down and you get some strings, you're going to have a problem. Drop that immediately in the garbage. And there you go. Cleaner than a TV commercial. I know it's not all that exciting, buddy. It's just black silicone. If you have a project that has a lot of screw holes like this, and you want to mask it the way we just masked this joint here, and you have a roll of tape that's down to the end, and you have a brass tube. So now I have the ability to mask all these screw heads. 
relatively easily. These are slightly small, these holes. If this was a real job, I would make sure I got a brass tube a little bit bigger. And now I can go in and fill those and not worry about staining the wood around it. Of course, I would let this dry and then I would sand it. So this is just for demonstration purposes only. This is my new GoPro session. It's the uh, GoPro Hero 4 session. It's like an ice cube. It's actually really cool. And this is something I used to do with the flip cameras a lot. I'd wrap them with tape and then I would hot glue them to whatever rig I wanted to try to do. So we're going to do a torch cam like this. And I want the camera to be right here. I don't know what that looks like, but we'll see it in a minute. I got some movie gaff tape here. Split it in half. Now I'm going to wrap the camera with the gaff tape. So I put a little gaff tape on there. So the camera is now working. Put a little bit of hot glue right on the side of the camera. So there. Now I have a torch cam. I hot glued it to my tool. Houdini. That's hot. Scorch cam. Scorch cam! <laughs> and there you go. It's a quick little mount. Back to new. I made a simple tape dispenser out of scrap wood I had lying around. This is the best type of tape dispenser because you can literally grab the roll you need. I've had tape on poles before, but when you want to take a tape with you, that makes it difficult to get at the one in the middle of the pole. By having it like this, I can take what I need, I could rearrange them, and I could put them in size order or color order. It's just made up out of a simple couple of pieces of scrap wood. Yeah! <sighs> There you go. Now I can just put that on a shelf. Wait. Tape two. Why? Just a bad joke. Oh. <laughs> so there you go. My tape dispenser. There are many like it, but this one is mine. You can make one too. Sometimes you run the risk of pulling the paint off of whatever it is you're putting the tape on or the finish uh, or in some cases the glue stays stuck on the object and then that's a, a difficult thing to fix typically I use acetone to clean off the the tape glue uh, but if you have a problem sometimes you could solve it by simply just doing this this is something most people know by getting a little bit of like cotton fur on there you're diminishing the stickiness if you're gonna wrap it completely around something You'll still have the strength, but when you go to pull it off, you're not going to get the glue stuck on it, or it's not going to pull the finish off of whatever you've taped. So something to consider. To diminish the adhesion, just kind of put it on a cotton shirt a little bit. This is just an example of an odd joint. Sometimes you find yourself gluing things together that aren't easily clamped. I use packing tape to hold that joint shut. <laughs> I lost the end, oh my god, I'm gonna get fired. Lick it. I found it, thankfully. <laughs> Sometimes you can use tape as a clamp.
sometimes at an installation I need to map out the entire floor of a place and linearly I need to know where the door is, where the window is, where the radiator is, where the electrical outlet is along a wall. Instead of trusting my notes, which I almost always incorrectly write in my notebook, I sometimes will take a roll of tape to that job with me and I will lay it down and I won't tear it off the roll. I'll leave it on the roll. And literally, without even using a ruler, I'll say, okay, from here to here is the outlet. And this is where the door jam begins. Goes all the way over to here. This is where the door jam begins. I go all the way over to here. There's the other outlet from here to here. And by having these actual marks in space, I know exactly where I need to do whatever it is I'm going to do. I'm not relying on notes and fractions of an inch, which confuse me. And then once I have all my notes written on this strip of tape, I literally wrap it back up on the roll of tape. I'm not trying to go perfect here. I'm just trying to preserve it. And there I have my flexible story stick that shows me exactly where things are. Now some of you trolls might say that the tape stretches and that might be true but when you build things to install you have to compensate for inaccuracies so everything has a little bit more than it needs. So this has worked for me several times. Maybe it will work for you.